A very good morning to you. Thank you for joining us on another edition of Off the Press. This is the beginning of the week, and we get to know what is making the headlines in our newspapers. My name is Felicity Ezewike. I will not be doing this alone. I have as guest today our senior programs uh, producer, <coughs> Fumi Unwajefe. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. All right, we'll start with the Punch newspaper and see what the headlines are screaming this morning. The biggest one here is state lock hunts with FG over road projects refund. Uh, details of that story is on page two. Uh, you can also see, there's it on your screen. Uh, that's the one I wanted you to see. You can't determine uh, status of roads from Abuja. That's according to a commissioner. Accept responsibility. You've not paid us 78 billion naira. Kwaibom government tells FG. Payments are made after verification. Federal government replies. These are some of the um, stories for you. Go get details on page two. But of course, you get to hear the opinion of our guest this morning. Uh, just above the nameplate, you'll see Varsity's IPPIS begins today as urges boycott. Rice prices. Rice, rice price rises by 29.41% in two months. <coughs> Hate speech bills. Sponsor recants, removes debt penalty. Interesting. Uh, we also have uh, this one here, not a very cherry one. Um, details on page 55 says uh, 25 die in Republic of Congo plane crash. We did capture that in our news earlier uh, just a moment ago. But let's bring our guest in before we uh, take a look at some of the other headlines this okay. morning. Uh, which would you want to take on first? I think, first of all, the, the screaming headline about the states. So it's been on for years. Every time the states and, you know, some people will say, oh, it's just the Buhari administration. No, even when Obasanjo, I can remember Obasanjo and Bolatini move in Lagos, and I'll say for Lagos, because, like, we, you and I both live and, you know, commute in Lagos and work in Lagos. So most of the roads are bad. So we don't even know. The citizens don't know whether these roads are federal roads, these roads are state roads. We just want to commute safely, go to our workplace safely. And, of course, for a city of Lagos that already has enough traffic, these roads are bad. So this back and forth between states and federal government, they have to look for a way around it. I think I think what always happens at the end of the day is sometimes, you know, the federal government will say, go and fix this road and we'll, you know, replace the money back. But with every other thing in Nigeria, sometimes the contracts are inflated and that's why it always goes over this back and forth. And sometimes the state's government would have claimed that it fixed a particular kind of road and then the government, and that's why, um, you know, when I was reading the story, the government was saying that they need to go back and verify if this roads were, you know, truly fixed and how much the governors have said that they've but spent. But why should that be taken forever? Because as it stands at the moment, uh, the roads are bad. They said contracts, some of them have been fixed. So yeah. does it seem to you that the federal government has a point when they say that they need to verify? You just mentioned that these roads need to be taken a look at. Well, for me, I think we should just go back to the beginning. I don't even think we should even ever get to the point where there's back and forth because the citizens are the ones that are suffering for this back and forth at the end of the day. If you travel out of, you know, Lagos, travel out of the cities, the main roads, the, all, it's like all the roads in Nigeria, you know, are just bad. So it shouldn't even get to the point of where we're going back and forth with, oh, the federal is If the federal government leaves up to this responsibility in the first place, the states will need to fix it. They should just fix the roads. And we shouldn't even wait because now the rainy seasons are over. We shouldn't wait for when the roads become really bad and they just, they're just totally terrible before we fix them. I think the cost will be less. If we see a small patch, fix it and then we move on. But you know, with Nigeria, the bigger the contract, uh, the bigger the ditch, the bigger the contract, the more money for, you know, both for the contractors. Yes. Alright, let's look at this hate speech bill because it's been a very <sighs> controversial. Yes, we talked about been. it in the newsroom yes. earlier. Um, what's your take on this story about the senator recanting, removing debt penalty? Oh, yes, because at first, many of the people, uh, many of the citizens were on that hate speech because of that, um, you know, the debt penalty. But I don't think it's just a debt penalty. So there's a lot of distrust with the citizens that, look, you claim this hate bill is for people like you and I. If people write something on social media or write something that is false, you know, about me or you know, allows me or allows somebody else to go and take you know their lives and then this so supposedly hate, bi hate bill will find the person and ensure the person goes to jail but with Nigeria everything else we do not trust because the politicians can swap it at the end of the day and now it now becomes a thing of everybody I write something about you know a governor that's true maybe the facts are there you turn around and say oh the governor you know it has caused the governor emotional distress oh it's a hate speech so who determines what a hate speech is yes it is stated you know 
by law or is supposedly spelled out in the bill, but you know, there's a lot of distrust about that. So removing the death penalty is a good thing, but it's not enough. But I like the fact that a lot of noise has been made about it. And it's not just the noise that is just social media noise there because if you read the story um, another senator from joss is now taking views from his constituency a lot of people they're trying to get a lot of feedback a lot of review and that's how every bill should be so i'm glad that this um, hate speech got this kind of attention i hope that at the end of the day it is totally totally reviewed if you ask my personal opinion um I will say they should just you know shut it down because there are other bills and there are other laws that already provide for some of these things that the hate bills are already talking about. So, All right um, before we come to the prize of rice, yes, because that has to do with the borders. Uh, let's look at some of these ones at the bottom of the punch newspaper this okay. morning. We have arrest Kogi PDP woman leaders killer Buhari is finally <sighs> speaking up on the death of that woman during the just concluded yeah. elections in uh, Bielsa and uh, Kogi state. Uh, we also have grandma kills two day old baby to stop daughter marriage oh, gosh. I read uh, that the story. picture That's of the, 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 the woman is yes. here you, you see this kind of then we have the boat mishap again in Lagos when you see stories like this I mean okay so for the um, the woman leader that was killed in Kogi state it's not enough for the president to say because if you if you had been following the story her husband the husband of the woman uh, leader in PDP had recounted of how a couple of thugs, in fact, he even mentioned names of the people that had harassed her at the polling units, and you know, there was a fight and all of that, and they had threatened her. Their names, they are suspects. So it's not like they're going to go and pull out people from, you know, from thin air. They are people, they are suspects. So it, it shouldn't be just. Um, it, another government declaration I say oh do this and if you see her story it is across even on the nation it's across many of the major headlines but I don't even just think it's just about just declaring and I think is yes the, the woman's leader's case is truly sad and they should they know who the suspect are truly trust me they know who the suspect are they can bring them to book but it's about looking at the entire electoral process that happened in by Elsa do people always have to die when we have elections do people always have to be killed when we have elections and this is not even the first time and I will go and that's why I always say it doesn't always start with this particular image even though that's what we're focusing on in 2015 in Kano um, the uh, electoral officer was killed with, he died with his wife also in a fire with his wife and his two children and till today no culprits have been brought to book so it's not enough for the president to say oh this is barbaric we all know it's barbaric but what is going to be done are they going to bring the real killers to book and for the last story about the woman that killed uh, the two-day it's old it's it's i read that story just she doesn't want her daughter to marry this particular person and then you go and kill an innocent child you got i don't even understand how this you know whole of trying to influence who your 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 an adult is trying you know trying to marry that's really a you know a sad okay sad uh, we'll just keep the rice border for a moment and okay. go to the nation newspaper to see what is here mm -hmm. uh buhari killing of kogi pdp woman barbaric callous uh, that's uh, on the front page that's it on your screen now president condoles with family perpetrators must face the law mm -hmm. uh, guest has spoken on that already we'll go to the top of the paper where you see that penalty to be expunged from hate speech um also captured in a punch newspaper uh chinese business community to back Lagos, Song Wulu gets offer. Uh, Bona Boy, Chubaba, others shine at Afrima, uh, 50 billion naira for creative industry. Yeah. Uh, that's a good one. Uh, you find details of that on page eight of the paper. Uh, if you come down, you will see a picture of an official sealing off a building. Uh, that will be an official of the Lagos State Environmental Protection Agency. That's it on your screen. Um, you also see another smaller one, another official removing speakers on top of religious building. Uh, Lassepa seals water parks. 20 others. Uh, that, I think that story yeah. was up um, last week as well. Mm. I think it's making a reemergence. That means it's a continuous process. Noise, pollution, yes. and all of that. Yes, I'm, I'm really know. glad that Lassepa is taking a lot of action because, especially for the religious houses, you know, um, so we are spiritual people, yes, but you shouldn't frustrate other people while we're, you know, worshipping, you know, worshipping God. And also for the, you know, you go to a place, there's no party going on. Even when there's party going on, you hear it two or three streets down the line. So I'm really glad that Lassepa is taking action, stealing down places, and I hope that people would, you know, start being conscious of other people while you're worshiping, while you are having, a, you know, a good time. So that's for me, that's a fantastic one that Blasepa has done. The yeah. fifty billion naira for creative industry. I don't know if you're able to. Oh yes. Um, well, for me, first of all, Bonner Boy. This is the year for Bonner Boy. You know, he also got the Grammy nomination. Even last year, uh, he's been on a roll for the past two years. Yes. I, well, it just shows all the hard work that he has been doing underneath, and he's truly paid off. The creative industry. I hope the man, the money is managed 
language properly. The Nigerian creative industry is, has done fantastic work. I feel like this is one of the best exports that we have given the world right now, a creative industry. Um, and it, it, did, it came together with a lot of individual efforts that is now be, trying to become a collective effort. Because I, I, I won't say that the government or anybody like we all know didn't really support the creative industry at that time. But they've gone inside, they built themselves. So I hope that this money, because truly the creative industry, like anywhere in the world, need, need a lot of money. But we just hope that the money goes into the right channels. And it's not just the focus on music, because that's just a thing. The movie industry is doing well. The, the music industry is doing well. So I hope they put in all the right channels and all the other sectors that support this uh, um, industries as well also get you know trickle down of some of that money as well. So all right, let's see well, what's on the back page before we flip on. Um, today on the comment and debate column on the back page of the Nation newspaper, you see the road. What is the road about? You have to read to find details for yourself. And Nigeria's Joan of Ak, who might that be? Be rather, that's a hardball on the back page of the paper. We flip now to another one, and that's uh, the Vanguard newspaper. The PDP woman leader is also here again. Fish out killers of Kogi PDP woman leader. That's the president speaking. I mean, it, it's sort of, it, it, it's a good thing at least that the president yes. is acknowledging, acknowledging uh, yes. the situation as it is and saying, putting more pressure on uh, police officers. But do you really see, because this is not the first time uh, yes. someone is losing their life, life in, yeah, in an election. Do you actually see justice being done in this? I mean, let's take this as an example. Ah, uh, you know, for this, see, this is Nigeria. Nothing is predictable. Hopefully, hopefully, her family will not allow this case uh, beyond the president's directive. They will not allow this case to die. They should just keep going to court and hopefully justice will, you know, come. It just shows a lot about our, you know, electoral. And like I said earlier, I don't know why people have to die. You could go to the police center, vote, and go home. This woman did absolutely nothing. They blocked, they burnt her inside her own house blocks her from coming out. So we hope that the killers are found and we hope that in finding her killers, they find the other killers of all the needless deaths that happened in this recent election in Kogi State and in Bayelsa State as well. All right, well, we have other headlines as well on the Vanguard newspaper, just like a couple of them. Um, 37 million Nigerians now have unique identity. That's a vice president speaking. Mm -hmm. If you want to know what he's talking about, details is captured on page 41 of the paper. And then if you look just beneath it, the Hate Speech Commission bill is back. Sponsor says death penalty will be amended to respect Nigerians' wishes. I mean, it looks like you're listening to uh, the voice of the people. That remains to be seen by the end of the day. Uh, Nigeria's external reserve falls to 22 months low. Uh, we also, that's uh, a bit of finance for you. Um, Yobe Kogi, APC chairman, deny calling for Oshimole's sack. Senate moves to include constituency projects in annual budget. That's uh, another one. Money, 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 money everywhere. Uh, we also have hate speech again captured. Uh, short race there. Sarah petitions AU over harassment shorties. Falano. And then if we go to the top of the paper, a picture of uh, Amechi is there, and the story beside it is Amechi targets April 2020 to complete Lagos Ibado Railway. And then a Lagos gridlock task force gets clamped down order on traffic offenders at mile two, first tag, Igando, others. Um, Oyema's indictment, America goes after lawbreakers, says Buhari's aid. Jonathan blasts lecturers rigging elections for politicians. That story was also captured in our news earlier. But I, I want to talk on this Oyema's indictment. Okay. Um, America goes after lawbreakers, says Buhari. He has come out to deny the claims that uh, mm. everything they're saying is false. And he will do all he can to clear his name from all of this. But do you see, unlike in, let's say for us here in Nigeria, there might be errors here and there, but do you see the American law enforcement agency coming out with this kind of allegation if they don't have real proof, considering the personality of this businessman? Well, of course they'll have proof, but you know, every proof you have to bring it to court and then they will, you know, the court will decide, they will go back and forth. So I like the fact that, you know, Oyema is not backing down or coming, he's not, he gave a statement, he made the night 
because I, I saw the report on, on Saturday night, on Sunday morning, he had spoken to his lawyer, he has a statement out, he's planning to go to court, I, and I do wish him well in court, so I truly pray that he has, even though another story has come out um, if recently about um, an allegation in 2014 about the militants, about some amnesty money that, you know, was misspent, and some of the were allegations that he had used part of that money to set up, you know, airpiece, but like I said, they are all allegations, 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 until they get to court and they prove it. So, he's going to spend a lot of money because he has to go and prove his case in the U.S. and get fantastic lawyers to understand that system and see what it is. But you know, like the U.S., they're they're, they're you know very um, thorough. So if they've no, they, before they came out with this um, allegation and putting out a statement, they have gone through all the records and all the banks. If you um, if you read the report, there's clear details on monies that were transferred, um, in what names of companies and all of that. So Oyema just has to go. He has come out to say he's not owing anyone. He's not fronting for anyone, which has been the allegation. So let's just let him have his see day. See what happens. And see what happens. Okay. Let's Let's take your thought on the Oshimale situation. Uh, back and forth statement. Del Rufai was in the news earlier this yes. morning talking about no uh, no uh, comment has been made at the neck level to yeah. as to you know resignation to of Oshimale. And now we have a group coming out to deny calling for Oshimale sack. What is going on in the APC, in your opinion? Oh uh, well, I think the APC, like like every political party, um, you know, in Nigeria, because I feel like Nigeria's political system and our parties are just kind of very peculiar, will always have, well, you know, you see with the Oshimale thing, it has been going back and forth from Edo states, himself and Obaseki and everything. I think it should just have a, a meeting and just sit down and reconcile all the parties. Maybe the, maybe the chairman is probably overbearing, trying to impose a couple of things. And look, these people are politicians, have their own rights, they've, they've conquered their own territories in a long time. So I think they just have to sit down because the recurring factor here is Oshimale. And the recurring factor is Oshimale. So they need to sit down, have some form of reconciliation with the, you know, with the party with the agreed members before 2023 because this thing can just topple them over in 2023 if they don't get their acts together. All right, um, told we, we still have some time, but not enough apparently. Yes. Uh, let's do this day newspaper. The screamer here. Uh, I was really looking forward. I'll, I'll see if we can get your thoughts on that rice spot uh, okay. price thing, but let's see what the, the this day paper is talking about. Appeal against $200 million deposit on PNID case not lost says FG. Hearing on mode of payment comes up today. IPPIS ASU dares FG mobilizes for nationwide strike, tells members to shun enrollment. Again, the hate speech bill is captured here. If you go to the top of the paper, Let's see if we can do that for you. There you have it. Appeal court moves to first track hearing of Ancon cases, declare support for debt recovery drive. Analysts are speaking that they're saying MPC may retain interest rate to accelerate GDP growth. You find details on page eight of the paper. And a quick flip, you will see Alex Oti speaking outside the box today. And uh, his title is Between the Oppressor and the oppressee. We have loads of them in Nigeria at the moment. But let's uh, get you in uh, for me. Uh, let's, let's look at this big one. Okay. Um, so this appeal is... Um, personally, I feel like it's a shame, this whole PID case going back and forth and all of that. So we've had to deposit them. <coughs> 200. So after going about, we were not going to pay or we did pay, we didn't have... But it just shows, you know, it's just a symptom of a bigger problem. We're not thorough. So we go and sign all these deals, do a contract executed. You see a lot of abandoned projects. People don't go through, you know, the process. So you go and, and you just finish signing. We don't look at the final details. And it just shows, it shows a lot about the kind of people we elected, the kind of people that are chosen in. Was do you this, think we will come out of this I, strong? I'm not, I'm not very pay? sure. If you already started making a deposit, I'm not, I'm not sure we're going to come out of it very, uh, very Okay, strong. let's see this Asu Darin federal government mobilizing for nationwide strike. Well, I don't see a nationwide strike coming up. But this is why. Asu is already split. On it. So we had a faction over the weekend that said that some of the members should register, and now you have another faction saying that no they should go on So that strike, it's easier when there's a the united tradition. front. There's no united front on it. So there's already a split, so I don't think a nationwide strike is going to come up. All right, uh, let's uh, jump quickly to the 
Uh, no, I'll, I'll, okay, let's see what we can do. There's so many interesting headlines this morning on the yeah. papers, and I'm just juggling which yeah. one the to pay more attention yeah, to. Um, the Daily Sun is our next paper for review this morning. 2023 presidency, ACM backs Northern candidate. Um, and then we also have Can Will Come for Mother's Funeral. That's iPod speaking. Interesting headlines. Uh, we have a picture of uh, Senate Chief Whip, Dr. Oji Uzokalu, second right. Uh, pictures of uh, Mrs. Uh, Ifunaya Uzokalu, that's his wife, uh, wherever they're going, Kalu's Catholic Church to celebrate Feast of Christ the King, that's in Abuja. Um, air peace, fresh facts reveal legitimate aircraft purchase, that's uh, for you on the fourth page. I might just as well just give you a glimpse of what to expect when you, take, when you go grab a copy of the paper, uh, that's it for you this morning. Ah, the advertorial that's in here just fell out. Okay, that's it for you this morning. Uh, let's see, what am I missing? Air peace, fresh facts, reveal legitimate aircraft. Malabu scam, uh, AGF, EFCC clash over Doke's extradition. That's another one for you. Uh, governors, ministers, lawmakers, others for Sun MD's book launch today. Okay, uh, this one is just... 2023 presidency. You know, there's a story about uh, President Buhari, a lawyer going to court. I saw that story, but I've mm. not been able to read it in full, how legitimate that is. And now we have this um, ACF coming to say they're going to back not on candidates. Yes. Um, so Nigeria is a very peculiar country without peculiar. You know, there's this zoning, and it has been assumed that some, at some point they will say that the Igbo is going to produce a president in 2023. There are, uh, there are rumors that even uh, Bola Ahmed Ashiwaju also wants to run for president in 2023. So there are all sorts of rumors. So with this, I'm really not surprised because there's really been a lot of undertone, even when, um, if you remember about a few months ago, the Kaduna state governor was throwing jabs at, um, you know, Bola Tinubu. So I'm not surprised. We'll just have to wait to 2023, which is just literally around the corner. In a, in a month's time, we'll be in 2020. So we're just literally around the corner. I just see um, what it happens. But of course, I'm not surprised that they're going to back um, a northern candidate. And that's why there were allegations about the uh, president wanting to run for a third term, which he has totally debunked. That look, he's not going for a third term. He's going to allow a fresh person. Someone is going to court in. on that matter. Well, let's just leave it until <laughs> it's captured in the papers. Uh, Kano will come home for the mother's funeral. Do you see that really happening? Yes, and he, what would the federal government do about it? It is his mother. So, well, that's up to Kano. Look, Kano is a man with many tricks over his hand. The way, the way he escaped and showed up in Israel with nobody knew. So he will come for his, his it is his mother's um, funeral. So he has to come for his mother's funeral. But how is to do that and maybe after the funeral he might be arrested or he might escape again or the government will just allow him be well we'll just never know okay a quick thought on the price of rice increasing before we go because i really wanted to get your thought i like rice i don't know about you <laughs> so if the price is high and it's christmas what i'm trying to, to watch my rice intake because i've added a lot of weight so <clears throat> um of course that was totally expected because of the bother closure and because we're not self-sustaining yet so and that's one of the things i don't understand about this border closure you close the borders but we're not self-sustaining yet and even our rice Yes, we have a father rice and a, a bakaliki rice, which is not like totally like enough, and some of them are not even properly packaged. So you're going to have an inflation along the way. Hopefully, the uh, the, the border closure has been extended till January, but the problem is Christmas is around the corner, and of course, rice is going to increase, uh, which is like the staple food for every party um, that you go. We hope that the government reconsiders a stand on opening the borders and just look more about regulating what comes in, not just about shutting the borders. Because trust me, even with the borders being shut, rice has still been smuggled in anyway. So, thank you very much for coming a pleasure on the program being this here. morning. Yeah. Thank you for having me. And of course, thank you for watching. I hope there are so. In fact, if you don't go get the papers today, I know maybe you're overly busy, but try and fit in some time. Know what's happening in the country by looking at the papers. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. My name is Felicity Ezerike.